I'm aware there's only eight minutes. <laughs> and I'm sure you'd rather hear Asher than you'd rather hear me. I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. But that's okay. I can change. I can change what we've got to bring this morning because it kind of fits in with everything that we've been saying as a, as a church that we're believing for in this season. In this season. If you missed out on Wednesday, I want to tell you, you missed an incredible time as Wendy brought and followed on. Kind of, do we call that chapter two? Rob did chapter one last Sunday. If you haven't seen the message from last Sunday, I want to tell you, get on YouTube, get on the website, see and hear what God is saying. Hear what God is saying to his church because what we've heard this morning from Reg, even though you haven't heard the message yet, go home and listen to it on Sunday. He said, no, I didn't hear what was spoke, spoken last Sunday. Well, you've just in, got a blessing from what was spoken last Sunday. And Ashley, you've been walking the journey through. And what Wendy brought on Wednesday was incredible. Com, com, it complimented, that's the word, and it complimented that which was said. I want to tell you, God's doing something. God is doing something. We need to be hearing what he's saying. And when Rob says... The famine is over. Wendy brilliantly said, well, what does that look like? Because it's all right hearing a word, but you've got to say, well, what does that look like for me? It's all very well saying, yeah, the famine's over, brilliant, but what does that look like? And if you want to, I don't think, was it recorded on Wednesday? I don't think it was. Recorded. Wendy might have some of those. If you want to hear the second, go and speak to Wendy and she'll tell you probably, <laughs> you might remember. But you got the notes. You got, there was some, what was the bit in there that I liked that I scribbled down? Let me get it, let me get it on here. This is what you said, I don't know who you quoted it from, it may have been yours, but I think you said it was somebody else. It said, if there's not a need to challenge us, there won't be a word to stir us. Yeah? If there isn't a need to challenge us, a need, just like Asher said, a need. If there's not a need, you can, the Bible's littered with people that had needs. They're human just like us. Not, so they never had the Bible to talk for, you know that? They never had the Bible to go for and help them through, but they had a need. And if there's not a need to challenge us, there won't be a word to stir us. And the word was declared last Sunday yeah. that the famine is over. The drought is over. The drought is over. In my message for my title, and I think I'm going to have to bring part of it next Sunday as a second part, is my title is, I'm ready for rain. <laughs> I'm ready. Nudge the person next to you and say, I'm ready for rain. As the rain is falling, as the rain, I don't see it as a coincidence that it's raining outside. To me, this morning, that says for my life, because this is my declaration, but I want it to be your declaration. It's to say, if I'm believing on God, I am ready for rain. What does that mean? So I want to tell you today, God has absolute control over the famine and the drought. You have to know that. That's not just a flippant statement. But when I read my Bible, I, I, I believe and I recognize that God has absolute control over the famine and the drought in my life. And Wendy brought from 1 Kings 17 on Wednesday where it says there that, that God said, I will stop the rain. God said, I'm going to stop the rain. But then in 1 Kings 18.1, he says, I will bring the rain. That to me says that God has total control over the drought, over the famine. He's in control. That brings me great comfort to know he's in control. Because if he's not in control, then we're in trouble. If he's not sovereign then we're in trouble. You're in trouble. If we can't call on a God to say, God, I need you in my drought. I need you in my famine. Because the word that was spoken, it doesn't mean things are going to instantly change. In fact, sometimes they might get worse. But the devil knows that God has control 
over the drought and the famine. He knows God's word. And I I scribbled this down because it suddenly hit me. You know, he believes God's word more than I do sometimes. (laughs) The devil believes God's word more than you do. This is the devil. And his forces that work with him, the demonic, whatever, they believe in God's word more than I do sometimes. Isn't that sobering? You mentioned Job, Asher. The devil believed he had to, he, he could only go so far, couldn't he? God says so far and no further. You know, and I'm not amazed. I, I, I'm amazed, but I shouldn't be amazed. That when a word is spoken like it was last Sunday, then it's going to be challenged. And I shouldn't be amazed. You're probably not because you're a bit more longer in the tooth than I am. <laughs> You've got more experience than I've got. <laughs> Rosie's tooth fell out last night, didn't it? It's been, been sort of rooting around and kind of like, she's like, oh, I can't do my teeth. I can't do this. I can't. What was the excuse she gave me? I can't have a shower because my tooth might fall out, she said. <laughs> Has anybody ever come up with that one before? I can't have a shower because the water might hit my tooth and it come out. That's the kind of battle we're having. Don't forget the devil challenging the word. This is the word we're having challenged. Have a shower. Get in there. Have it anyway. Oh, sorry. Your tooth did come out by me pushing you in. No, it didn't. (laughs) But it came out this morning, didn't it? That was good. But I shouldn't be amazed when the devil challenges that word. And I've heard it this week, as I'm sure you have, with with stuff that's gone on. And there are people that are not well this morning in this place. That there's always a challenge. There's always a a contention, a fight when a word is spoken. Because the devil doesn't want you set free. He doesn't want you believing that which God has said. We should expect a challenge. But I want to tell you the very fact that you're in this place this morning says to me that there is a seed in your heart. There's a seed already in your heart. If there wasn't a seed in your heart, you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be here. But for some, there's a seed in your heart. All it needs is rain. (laughs) Ready for rain. And for a lot of you in this place, you've had seeds sown, but it looks dry. You see those, those pictures of, of a dry, arid land where there's cracks and there's drought. The seed is in there. All it needs is rain. And I want to encourage you this morning, and if you're in a dry place, the seed is in your heart. There's nothing wrong with the seed. The word, there's nothing wrong with the seed. All it needs is rain. All it needs is rain, but get ready, because the rain's coming. (laughs) Just listen. The rain is coming. See, we said last week that the famine's over. See, and I don't want this to sound harsh, but that's almost the easy part. And you alluded to that on Wednesday. Saying the famine's over is kind of out of respect. That's, that's the easy part. The harder part is trying to get the famine and the drought out of me. <laughs> and out of you. Isn't it? Because I know in my own life, I'm guilty of having a famine mentality. Guilty of having a famine Mentality, what does that mean? I think back to the children of Israel. That's probably the easiest thing to to relate it to. For those who are not, when God called out the children of Israel from slavery, they were 400 years, I think, in bondage and slavery to the Egyptians until eventually they cried out and kept crying out until God says, I hear you cry. And there came a day when the Israelites came out of slavery, the Red Sea crossing and all that. But then they spent a whole generation and years and years afterwards in God trying to get Egypt out of them. They had a slave mentality. They had a mentality of of, of coming up short. That's the hardest part. 
And I believe in this next season that, that I'm, I'm hearing and I'm understanding in my own life and I believe for others is that God needs to get that famine mentality out of me. Because the famine is over. But now I have to believe that what that means for my life and what God you've said in my life. He has to draw that out of me. And if you turn quickly as we we'll come to a close, but if you turn quickly to Numbers Numbers 11, please. Welcome the kids back in. Numbers 11. This is what they said. Numbers 11, verse 5. This is the children of Israel. They had come out. God had delivered them from slavery. That's a picture of your salvation. We're saved. That's not debatable. But you can still live in a slave mentality after Jesus has taken you out of slavery, out of sin. We can still get hung up in that mentality. This is what it says. Numbers 11, verse 5. This is the people complaining to Moses. They said, we remember. We remember. We remember the fish that we ate freely in Egypt, the cucumbers. The melons, the leeks, the onions, the garlic. See, when you start on fish, then you start to go and notice something else. In that like your life, it kind of starts there and you think, oh yeah, what about that? Oh yeah, and then the leeks and then the melons and then the garlic. And you start complaining at God saying, I remember how all that, that was all back in Egypt. It was all back there. They said that uh, there's nothing here except this manna in front of our eyes. God provided for them, but they were complaining about how God was providing. They were living still in a slave mentality. And I want to say to us that we, in this season, we need to come out of having a famine mentality. God is going to draw, I believe, that out of us. It's to not complain but like Asher so beautifully did, it says that, God, I know that there's no limit to your power. It goes on to say in verse 23 of the same chapter here in Numbers 11, it says that the Lord said to Moses, has the Lord's arm been shortened? What that means there, it says, is the Lord's power limited? That deserves a response. Is the Lord's power limited? There is no limit to his power. And Ash has declared something beautiful this morning that says that there is no limit to his power. That's coming out of a famine mentality. But God's got to draw that out of you. Because he said something, now we've got the responsibility to believe it. And walk through it. And so I'm aware that there was a great challenge and a fight, even last week. And you may be the certain person or hear me when I'm not saying, I'm not giving names. But there were lots of people that said to me last week, I nearly never came in. I nearly didn't make it in. And I'm, I've got that awareness in my, I don't know what it is, what do you want to call it, whatever. That when people say certain things, it, it'll pick it up on your radar and you think, that's interesting, that's interesting. Oh yeah, oh I've heard that again. That's saying, that's another person said. There was something, there was a fight on not to get you in last Sunday. But you've heard the word, now it's, it's walking in that word. It's walking in that word, God has got to draw some stuff because it may not necessarily change overnight. And then that's when we give up and we back off and we say, oh, that was a nice meeting last Sunday. That was all nice and fluffy and didn't Rob do well, bless him. <laughs> but when there's something like that, there's a, there's, a, there's a significance in the atmosphere that changes. And that's what I love that we've heard this morning is that God is moving through our lives as a testimony to hear, God, you're actually doing something. Is there any limit to Lord's power? I want to tell you today that God is in control over the famine. God is in control over the drought. God is in control. And that gives me great Comfort to know that God's in control. So I just want us to stand to our feet, please. It's been a bit of a different meeting again this morning. But a great time in his presence. Now we can do the second part because there's four stages 
I believe of four stages that the enemy tries to prevent you from, from walking through that which God has said. He wants to stop you. He wants to hinder you. He wants to prevent you from coming through. He wants to stop you receiving the fullness. The fullness of that word that was spoken. The fullness of that. And I want to take, I'll, we as a leader, we want the whole congregation to be going through that and coming out of that. We don't want to leave anybody behind. But what that means to you. And so Lord, this morning, Lord, as we've heard your word, as we've heard your children, Lord, Asher, Reds, giving testimony, Lord, of your goodness, standing in faith, faith over fear. Lord, let that so impact our hearts. That Lord, you're in this, this season, you 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 continue to draw that 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 maybe that that famine mentality, that that less mentality, that that just going through the motions mentor, whatever it may be, Lord, that you draw that out of us, that complaining mentality, that, that whatever that is for you this morning, that you say, God, I trust you. That in this season, Lord, there is no limit to your power. That, Lord, I'm still going to walk by faith. I'm going to walk by faith, not by sight. And so, Lord, we just give you all the glory. We give you thanks. We give you thanks for your word. And for those things that we're holding before you, Jesus, this morning, Lord, we know that you're working. You're working on our behalf. And Lord, we say today that we're ready for the rain. We're ready for the rain in this season that's going to water those seeds that have been planted. That Lord, that there be fruit that remains. That there be fruit, Lord. And we're thankful for the fruit that we've heard already today. 